so let me introduce myself if they are joining you and uh, myself dinesh kumar gandhi i serve as a technical trainer for dynamo and i was i was diversified in my technologies i provide training with aws csf and vmware dotnet and i am doing this training for last 10 years this is my cup of tea of training and about today's uh, thing uh, about this session on flows uh, where we going to cover uh, till what is that uh, spring 2022 days till that we going to concentrate and about flows uh, about flows it just gives you uh, though you are an admin if you are feeling that hey guys see look at here uh, um, apex is not my cup of tea as of now it might be in your future but as of now if you feel that apex is not my cup of tea but i like to have some superpower what a developer has uh if we were in that case obviously this flows will help you out those uses some process automation thing where you can automate a uh, few steps in flows or uh, this is about the last week thing what we did as we just went for one simple hello world flow we just added to our record page uh then we created a contact list and we tried to map with our existing account list and we have a few branches here like stream flow auto launch flow everything like that so as all of us know here just a quick thing it gives you an admin privilege it gives admin the feel of developer why flows you may ask me why flows we have process builder this that everything why flows it just gives you it just gives you uh, a complete pmr control you don't want to write any codes simply jump in have some dml performance for example you may working on one particular object if you want to interact with another object don't go for any apex code and roll back summary this that everything just straight away go there and do this after that it has a full complete dml control it can trigger any may can post a chat post it can update another opportunity uh, we have a lot of things in flows at first and foremost thing uh, to work on flows is go for process automation settings under process automation setting on your arc maybe in playground whatever you wish but i prefer arc on your dev arc just click this filter in accessible fields from flow request this is a first and foremost thing. from your arc setup process automation setting Uh, can anyone just uh, put on chat why we have to do this? Why we have to do this beforehand? Why we have to enable this filter inaccessible fields from flow request? Uh, for backend fields to be used on flow, Mohit is asking for backend fields to be used on flow. Him and the same to access fields. Uh, yep, somewhat relevant. I just like like to add few more flavors to it. See, from basically using flows. Uh, we cannot create a record or update a record and we cannot access some global 
fields that are available like records users and all if you want to create a record or update a record if you want to uh, use some global record like uh, global fields like records we have to enable this otherwise no need if to access fields yes I agree to access fields in the way of creation of page if you want to create a record or update a record if you want to use some global fields enable this somewhere around your flows won't trigger any errors but the updation and the creation of records you may not do it if it is a case please scroll back and check this particular uh, step if it is proper it, it is it will work fine if it is not proper if it is unchecked uh, may might be unchecked by default maybe some other settings collapsed so if you have some issues with creating record updating record using flows check this. so on before and it's a better practice whenever you create a new arc just jump in go to process automation setting enable this so we can design our flow as we want what it then Uh, in flows last week we saw about a screen flow a record trigger flow a screen flow and record trigger flow and few more elements of flows the difference between uh, this particular screen please focus screen flow and a record trigger flow scheduled trigger flow platform triggered flow auto launch flow we can split into two things screen flow and auto launch flow that's it screen flow has only the screen flows uh, core and uh, auto launch flow where you can have a record triggered flow uh, scheduled uh, triggered flow platform triggered flow auto launch flow all the things falls under auto launch flow i'll tell you the exact difference if user want to provide some input if user want to click a button something like that if he interacts if you have an user interaction and you want to add this flow to the particular record page if the two conditions are there if the user want to interact with the flow and you want to manually add a flow to a record page take a scenario like this contact list Last week we have opened up the contact feed. So get the reports, check for the tickets, and then create records, debug it. So first name, last name, mail. Some user interaction is happening. So that time we go for the screen. And another important thing is you want to add this to a record page. You, you want to add this to the record page by editing like this adding a component of flows and choosing a proper flow i hope you can refer uh, past week Thing if you have symptoms, how to add this, how to edit this. Like this. So 
this is about the screen after that a record trigger flow this is an auto launch flow you don't want to add you know you can skip the uh, our previous step we are going for one particular object within that object we selected one record we just added the page skip that part it is auto launched as soon as you create the flow it have any number of flows you can see these four all screen flows you want to add it but here a phone name update whenever you save one record to an account object it will be updated you can see it is an auto launch flow we created a record trigger flow that also falls in the auto launch flow meaning is uh, it is auto launched you don't want to trigger there is no triggering point at all if you activate that it will be auto launched and in record we have uh, before save and after save after that we have few elements screen that is to design a screen to interact with the user action it can perform any number of action it can trigger an apex class it can trigger an uh, email it can trigger some uh, notifications like kind of this kind of actions to be done subflow uh, you design one flow uh go to me there is nothing called a workflow and screen flow in flows we have screen flow and auto launch flow that's it uh subflow design one flow that will be incorporated within that flow one flow may be incorporated with another flows you don't want to bulkify your code to reduce that can create a subflow and assignment decision looping sorting uh, this makes a flows a lot of difference a dml thing uh, create record update record get record find and roll back this adds this dml makes this flow wonderful uh, we have we not part by part we design scene but it uh, depends on our number like category we used here and there few features and you have some auto layout and free flow uh, anyway is fine no asan chahan is saying i tried one flow but getting a below error and handle fault uh you can uh, you can you can fix it with the help of uh there is two possibilities there either your flow is in activated you may have n number of versions of flows you are working with some other uh, version of flow that is not appropriate to this and uh, this will cover using uh, exception handling i'll cover this topic how to get the proper error message why it is happening uh, while exception handling fine now screen flow is done record flow is done now it's time to get into scheduled trigger flow what is a scheduled trigger flow uh, i'll tell you every day by 5 o'clock your uh, manager wants some updates from you 
whether you do it or not, uh, it will automatically fetch data from your org and push it to your manager. And if you have some subordinates, reportees, you are pushing some uh, uh, data to your everyday file, then okay. Now, how to do that at specific time, at specific frequency of record, we have to do that. It's just a scheduled trigger flow. At which time, what time, that and all we decide and how the mail has to be sent. We'll decide one by one. So uh, last week and all, what we did is we have just taken some uh, custom object and standard fields. Uh, we are using, sorry, we just using some standard objects and standard fields. Now we like to change a bit. What if if I want to work with some uh, custom object or custom field that can be inherited with flows? Uh, take a scenario. Uh, I want to add. Some values to the pick list of case object. I want to add some values to the pick list of case object. So, how we do? I'll repeat I want to add some values. In the pick list of status, the case object. So, how I do? Okay, by adding the values fields in relationship of case object, uh, I'll go to this object manager. I'll take, since I said it is a case object, I'll go for case. After that, as you said, it fields in relationship. Already, I do have some status pick list. Some status pick list. I want to modify it or else I want to change it to some other. So go to change status. Here we have pick list values. I went to my case object within that I selected fields and uh, relationship as you said. Then I have some case status pick list values. Uh, I'll keep new, I'll keep working. Uh, this I'll change escalated as Very fat. Then uh, I'll add another pick list value. As default. So we just edited uh, one value and we just added another value. Now this becomes custom. Uh, though it's a standard object, I have new made few changes as per our convenience. Uh, rolling back to flows. Have a scheduled triggered flow. I want to set a schedule. I'll make it as Sunday. 
every day morning maybe around what the time is then we can complete by 10:15 max 10:15 do i want to send daily or weekly or only once this completely depends on us i want to set as a home daily daily basis i want some updates now from today every day morning 10:15 am a flow is triggered if you if you make whatever for an example if the case status is closed one it will gather all the records of closed one push it to that account owner like that imagine so every day by 10:15 this flow will be triggered automatically you don't want to do anything uh choose object uh here i'm not going to do it it's optional but if you want we can do it now uh, i want to gather all the records of case so i want to gather in the flow i want to gather all the records of case object so what i do now which component i want to select which element i want to select get records exactly i'll go for get records i'm going to gather the records of we change it that now verify cases all verify cases now the object i i'll be going to work is case so i'll select this uh nothing difference either you can do this way or that way completely depends on how you work case object and conditions or i'm going to select all my case object status very fast so on our case object we edited our pick list now the pick list values is reflecting here verified deferred you can see here i'm going to get all the records of the case object whose values of status is verified if the status is verified in a particular case of the record we select that i'm going to select all the records i'll just select i'll just choose the field you take care of everything uh if you want to assign it to another variable if you want to use it in near future you can go for this but uh, uh what i do now is a uh, hey, yeah look at here i just choose the fields you do whatever you want field this status so bringing in the data putting in that particular record id those and all things sales force you take care i want this particular status that's it so under get record 
I have given a label. I have selected an object. The condition is uh, when the value is verified, when the status is equals to verified, take all the records. Uh, focus on the status. Done. So I have a flow on every day morning from the blog. Get all verified cases. Uh, Get all verified cases. Now, what if I gather all the records? We want to check whether there is some data or not. I want to check whether. There is some data on it. Exactly. I can go for issue. Check for null. If not now, all our data, now this point of time, all our data of case object whose status is verified, you will have here. Whether we have the data or on the bunch or the whole, all the things will be handled. It's null. Thoughts. If it is null, there is no need of proceeding this flow further. If not null, this will check for not null condition. If not null, and then we have a default option. Now, if it is verified, means there is no uh, point of dealing with the cases further. So I want to close that. If it is verified, if it is verified, it gather all the reports from the case object and it checks for null. And if it is if it is having some data, I want to close it. I want to change the status as closed for all the records who are verified. The case goes like this. Every day by morning 10 o'clock, we will gather all the case objects record whose status is verified. We are checking for null. If you have some values there, you want to make status of the case object record to closed. All, all, everything. Everything you want to take us close. So I'll put a loop here. I'll put a loop here. Yeah. 
case, case from the collection variable, you get the collection variable, first item to last item. Yeah. For all this collection variable, which has all the data, yeah. if I connect the connector, it last. If not, none. Yes. If it is not none. Or loop. Now, from the loop, I got all the records. I'll assign some values. I want to close it now. I'll assign some values. Change status, change status. I want to change the status of current item for the loop case in the status. It will take because it's loop now, nah, it's a generic for loop. It will take one one value at a time, it has to change it equals to close. It's 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 a it's not a coding loop where the iterated increment decrement are happening. It's a just a loop. It won't have any condition as you see. Just we want to select the collection variable and what to what. Uh, leave your programming steps uh, increment or condition. It just like act like a method. So the loop from loop I have added to. Change status for each item in collection of the last item in the collection. For each item in the collection, I want to do that. For each item in the collection. Uh, do you think now it's closed? No, because we are it to assign it. Uh, we want to update the reports. Fine. Uh, we are it to assign. A collection, we have to give back as an entire collection. Update DML is going Assignment. New resource. 
it's a variable all closed yes for all now this will bring all the verified classes now the change status is closed it updates we are collecting as an a, a simple variable that variable we use it to update everything on mass all closed cases record of sorry this operator i want to assign it i want to add it but only equals comes in now as of now it's fine that assignment is fine it changed is closed just go and delete this all closed report for my I gathered. I changed the status. I want to make it as bulk. I want to add it to each and every. It's a record. New resource. It's available. Just give me a. All, all the record and the equals comes in Close cases. It's a report of the assignment. Yeah. Yeah, Bhupati. Thank you. I missed. I tell you what. Uh, we gathered as a collection, but I, I made a, a glitch third. In this next assignment, I want to use one variable. That variable holds all the value of closed case. Those cases. 
all those cases add it to ceramide current Okay. Current mind is the loop in the which one I choose account ID or case. Account ID or case. If it is a case, if you are doing for whole item, as we will have rightly suggested, you can click the top. If not, if you are dealing with few more fields further, you can do that else. Just remove this. Like this, the tank pack. So, as of now, what we did is, or we just selected schedule trigger flow. We gathered all our records, whose case is verified using get record, and we check whether it's there is a null uh, values there or not. If there is a value, go for a loop, change the status as closed, gather as a single. Record element, push it back to the loop. Now, as you suggest, we go for update records. Update cases of all close cases. Done. Just connect this with load. As this assignment container connects, acts like kind of that's a collection variable. So I'll just refer this again. Flow starts on daily basis, it gathers uh, all the records. I check for null value if it is null. It, it won't do a default outcome is come out of the loop if it is having some data put on loop for all the data change that verified cases as, as closed case assign it to that is we have to give it as a bulk to that uh, loop one particular data that is all case updated to the loop that which case updated to your that in case updated to your uh, I want to delete this. Delete this. This is not. I made a wrong connector. Yeah. After the last item games, it gathers all the records. And got updated. Will there be multiple DM? Uh, only one DM statement. This update record is a only one DM statement that updates after last item. For each item, it changes the thing called closed, uh, verified as closed. All those verified as closed change will be collected here as an all closest case. 
after that last setup it will be given to back to the loop that all case closes case will be added here it all record check for null if it is not null go to loop change the status gather all the record for which you have make changes give back to the loop got the particular collection uh, variable to perform your dmr that is a flow when we use get records yep we do have a governing limits we do have a governing limits we do have a governing limits and we have loops on child objects as plus have a parent child yes we can we can perform that after child perform i'll give you some get records we get the records which can be used further but it's having an object in start element how we can use record fetch format can be possible okay uh this we have to roll back to this particular uh, use case program where we used our uh, flow with get records you can uh, we gathered using get record now this particular flow here you can try it for the Here you can try for that. Use some assignment variables. Uh, this is our loss contact list that we use to get record values. Now, huh? yep, record ID. With the help of that, you can make some decisions. Yes, what I'm saying is, you have to create a variable. We cre created a variable here, now, huh? like. we have created a variable here like uh, get the all cases now instead of that so not here instead of that you choose this two fields and assign values you use your uh, record id and map your account id with that Here is an option. Right. Now, I save this. change just i instead of description i am giving a full name for my end definition that is fine i saved I activate now. This we can't run every day. Day fixed date by ten fifteen only it will run. If it is a case, how come I check it? If it is a case, how come I check it? Is it scheduled there or not? Is that scheduled there or? Go to your setup and uh, search this. schedule jobs the jobs
sixth scheduled on sixth, but it I didn't uh, update my time over here, so it's showing the current time. This way it works. Schedule. If you want to change the schedules, go there and change your uh, start time or weekly twice or that you can do it weekly or daily. That we can do it over here. The schedule, go to that uh, particular flow and edit that once. Fine. Uh, yes, just change it and you can able to see logs. Uh, for that, uh, for my uh, suggestion is uh, use your use your uh, subflow here. Use your subflow here for fault handling, exception handling. I'll do that. Use your exception handling thing. Yep. Uh, in the same flow, if you want to push an email to the account owner, what you do? Okay, it's fine. I gathered, I updated. After that, I want to give. A notification to the account user. Just go to actions and do it. Push a notification to the user. Fine. That was shouldn't take your example. Next, I like to jump into another thing was platform event. Just for integration purpose. Just for integration purpose. Uh, any platform, if there is any changes. A new contact to be created. Just for integration purpose. Platforming will trigger flow. If I want to uh, trigger this, this is record based. This is time based. This is obviously P based. A triggering point is P platform event. I'll check whether do I have a platform event or not here. Uh, why we use platform events? Any idea? I'll go. I'll go with your integration thing. 
if anything has to be uh, interacted between your external and sales force or sales force to external or uh, any changes to be happen if you want to notify that in that case we go for uh, platform events uh, i don't have any platform event so that i don't have any uh, triggering point for my flows there is no triggering point for my flows platform events it is deep so for this platform event we going to build the flow choose platform event the first and foremost thing that's my platform event hi uh, i'm back so i do have a platform event for this platform event we'll perform an action obviously i'll perform an action what sort of action this take a scenario simply i'm going to create a contract simply i'm going to create a contact create contact create contact value i give us dd is a value and uh, first name is first name if i want to include I'll include as just an input. Just I'm creating a contact based on a platform event. I'm just saving the browser. Saving the flow as the flows, the flows. It is a platforming, so it must have a triggering point. it must have a, a triggering point so for third i go for my dev cons here i just execute an anomaly from apex i'm going to trigger a flow first and foremost thing uh, i'm going to create an event There is there is an event already. There is an event. I'm go, just going to create an instance for it and storing it in a variable. For an example, this is my platform event. 
I'm going to have a variable for this. Just like you some name and we equal to now for this platform event I have created a variable. Now, I'm going to call to publish it. See, publish this. Publish this. This platform event has a variable now. This variable is used to publish this. Now, check whether it's pub successfully published or not. If If it is success, write your apex. We all know that what for we use system dot. Uh, yeah, I'll explain. I'll give you the brief. System dot event us. So I'll just tell you what word we did as of now. We created a flow for platform event. In third, we said create a contact. Okay, fine. I'll create a contact. But if it is a platform event, it must have a triggering point. The triggering point is this. The triggering point is this. Create a variable and create a variable for the platform event. Use that variable to push it to database. This will publish events. Publish events means uh, it will trigger. It will be triggering a particular thing. That is our P. Our P is called in uh, flows. Using flows, we create a contact. We have a very simple P that is ready to publish. We have a very simple P that is ready to publish this p is ready to publish using the p we create a contact there must be a triggering point starting point of everything for that we use this variable it's like a simple object uh, instance creation for the event for the event we created a new variable. This new variable holds, it's like an object. This object, we are pushing it. This particular two lines are going to publish it. So if you, if the, if the PE triggering point, if you run this code, it has to trigger a PE indirectly. 
the P is called in flows. Using flows, you're creating a contact. We have a P that is ready to publish. We have a P that is ready to publish. That P, which in turn create in contact. But from this P to this flow, from this P to this flow, there will be a triggering point. That triggering point is this. We are creating an instance for the event and storing it on this particular variable. We are calling this particular publish method to publish the event. If you publish, your contact will be added. I'll just add a few more commands here for our better understanding. Instance of the event. Now, method two. Publish events. Then inspect it. If it is success, show us successfully published events. Else, see what is the error. This from Rodi Web. Error. And you can convert things as. It is given that the success. successfully published events successfully published events so we have a p that is ready to publish and we have a flow 
that is to create a contact uh, using your apex what we did is we just fired this particular uh, publish now it's time to check whether the contact is created or not Let's see. It is not created. So we have a platform event and we use the dot flow to create a contact. For triggering this platform event, we used our X. You want a code? Uh, I'll give you that. Triggering it. That is the code. We created an object, we published that uh, event, then we inspected whether it's cut out. This one and then Just a minute to do that. Uh, if, uh, platform even during admin, I'll try to cover it. The complete platform events. Why? How? Everything. Okay, so scheduled flows, then uh, only one flow is pending, uh, and two topics, a uh, few topics are there. But meanwhile, let us make a quick check ourselves. Are we able to do uh, any particular things? I'll just give you a case. Try, try now on your thing. Just try to do this. Create a flow. That creates a task. Whenever the need is generated, it's a very simple flow. Try to create a flow that creates a task, assigning a task that is an enhancement of that. 
enhancement of dirt is whenever the lead is generated create a task to that particular developer uh, or that particular uh, inside sales rep that particular marketing guy so whenever the lead is generated assign some task to somebody that is a overall feature but as of now just create a task whenever the lead is generated uh, you can you can you can use anything whether it's a uh, uh, scheduled thing or uh, screen flow it's completely see over sh it won't take much time uh, the time is 10:57 maybe in 10 minutes we can complete this off so is any additional enhancement to this particular uh checkpoint is up to you but we wanted to create a task whenever the lead is generated try this now please Okay, next we'll jump into one of uh, important things. I have created, but getting this debug statement, no triggering record was specified. Fine, I'll tell you why. The start timer is ticking with another. Then it eight seconds. Okay, in my case, task is being created correctly with all data, whatever I have. That's for what model learning what lead. Mm -hmm. Fine. Let's check it. Use your record ID option. Okay. okay. It's done. Okay. Who is going to help me out? Uh, I'm not on flows. I want to create a task in the latest generator. Just help me out. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, create a uh, click on the new flow. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, I, I have created a flow using the record triggered flow. Mm -hmm. So we can use the record triggered flow okay. and create new. And here the requirement is whenever a lead is generated, it means the lead is created in the system, then a task should get automatically created and get assigned to the relevant owner. Yeah. So here in the object, we have to create the lead. Yeah, and okay. then go down. Mm -hmm. uh, action and related records because we are going to create it on the some other record. If we have to update the field on the same record, then we can use the fast field update. But since here the requirement is to update, create a record on the some other object, so we can use the action and related records and click okay. done. Uh, now click on the add element. Uh, go down and uh, add the create records element here. Create records here. Uh, in create records, we can put the uh, label as create task. And since we have to create only a single record, uh, we can choose only one mm -hmm. how many records to be created uh, and how to set the record field. So we can choose here uh, since we have to create the a new record on the task, use separate resources and literal values. Uh, and in the object, select the task as an object. Uh, click on done. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, in search field, uh, I have just uh, used one field, which is status. 
uh, and a status value I, we can select here in the values uh, we can choose the value any of the value not started or in progress so not started will be, in progress will be at the initial value just click on done uh, now save the record save the flow uh, we can give it as a create task Uh, just save it. Uh, then activate it. Now we can go on the uh, sales application uh, and lead. So here, when we create a new lead, uh, just create a new lead. That's it. Uh, just create the new report. Uh, in that task, it will create a new task. We can go into the task. Here you can see the new task has been created. Uh, um, but uh, I have not associated it with any lead right now. So if we want to associate with the lead, uh, on the at the time of create task, we can uh, populate the lead ID there. Okay, uh, I got your point. If you create a task uh, while creating it. You just want to set a record ID, is it so? Yeah, yeah, correct. So record ID, uh, we can pick it here. So the task will automatically get assigned to the, like it will get associated with the that particular lead. Yeah. Uh, so this is, is how uh, I have achieved the request. Yeah, fine, fine. Yes, if you want to populate it as position, sir, like uh, Ahmed said, you have to use the record ID. If you use your variable called record ID, use associated with the account ID, then it will be done. This particular lead, whatever you generated, is assigned to the task. By default, it is it is assigning to uh, the owner. Creating. But if you want, you can assign it to another account ID. Use the account ID, uh, choose another account. You can assign it in that way also. Ah uh, yes. Fine. Now, I hope. Thank you, Afan. Sounds good. Just we want to see in flows. It's all about how you work. You can start with beginning. Later on, you dig it deeper, dig it deeper, dig it deeper, and you can uh, use any of your logical stuff over there and achieve it. It can be done. Thank you so much, Arpan Chahan. Now, imagine. Okay, 11.15 we can have. Okay, Alan. Uh, okay, folks, we'll just break for a while and we come back with uh, uh, just traditional two more topics that are important, then we go ahead. Yeah, don't confuse with your any of your uh, admin task. Flow is completely different. Here, record ID, whose ID, record ID plays a major role. It what ID, who ID, and all. It's it's not matter here. We'll be back by eleven thirty then.